The analysis of mechanisms will often involve solution of trigonometric equations. Therefore, in this module, we will go over the basics of solution of trigonometric equations. Let us first look at a couple of examples. Suppose we are given sine theta is equal to half and cos theta equals to square root of 3 by 2. We have to compute all values of the angle theta, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Let us now look at one common way to solve the problem, which is actually a wrong solution. What you may do is note that tan theta equal to sine theta by cos theta, which gives 1 by square root of 3, if you substitute sine theta equal to half and cos theta equal to root 3 by 2. Therefore, theta will be arctan of 1 by square root of 3, which will give you the solution pi by 6 if you use a calculator. And then you know that tan is also positive in the third quadrant, so some of you may also give the solution of 7 pi by 6. However, in this case, only the solution pi by 6 is correct. The other solution is wrong. Now let us look at another problem which is very similar. Now I have given sine theta as minus half and cos theta as minus root 3 by 2. Again, if I follow the previous procedure, I get tan theta equals to 1 by square root of 3, which is the same as before. Now here, you can again put it in your calculator and get theta equal to pi by 6. And you may again say that since tan is also positive in the third quadrant, another solution that I get is theta is 7 pi by 6. However, here the solution pi by 6 is wrong. The solution 7 pi by 6 is correct. So one has to be careful when solving these very simplistic liquid equations. The correct way to do it is use what is known as the function a tan 2, which is a way of performing arc tan or tan inverse that is sensitive to the quadrant in which the point can lie. So let's look at a general problem. We want to compute the values of the angle theta such that tan theta equals to y by x and theta lies between 0 and 2 pi. Now a tan 2 y comma x is defined as simply arc tan of y by x if both x and y are positive. So what you have to do is look where this point x comma y lies. So let us create these four quadrants. This is x positive, y positive, q1, q2, q3, and q4. So if the point x comma y lies in the first quadrant, that is x is positive and y is non negative or y is positive, then you just do arctan of y by x. That's your answer. If x is positive, and y is negative, that is, you are in the quadrant q4. Then you have to add 2 pi to arctan y by x. If x is negative, that is, you are in the quadrant q2 or quadrant q3, you have to add pi to arctan y by x. If x is 0 and y is positive, so a point on the positive y axis, then the angle is pi by 2. And if x is 0 and y is negative, the angle is minus pi by 2. The eta and 2 function is undefined if x and y are both 0. If you are programming, then the eta and 2 function may be available to you depending on the programming language that you are using. And in most common programming languages, it is available. So if you use MATLAB or Python or C, C++, it will be available to you. So you should not use the arctan function but you should always use the a tan 2 function. If you're using a calculator, use your calculator, see what is the arc tan that it gives or the tangent inverse that it gives. And then based on where the point x comma y lies, you can use these rules to actually find out what should be that angle. Now, we will move on to the solution of two types of trigonometric equations. And these equations occur quite frequently in mechanism analysis. As we will see soon, to solve problem 2, you will need to solve problem 1. So we will look at a technique 
for solving problem one first. Throughout the course of the next couple of lectures, you will see how problem two and problem one arises in the context of analyzing mechanisms. However, here I will just solve these two problems independently without the context of mechanism analysis. So let's look at the equation p sine theta plus q cos theta plus r equal to zero. Here p, q, and r are known constants. So they are some numbers, two, five, seven, whatever it is, some number. And theta is my unknown variable. To solve this problem, what we have to first do is express the sine theta and cos theta in terms of half angles of tan and convert the trigonometric equation into a polynomial equation. This is a standard trick for converting trigonometric equations into polynomial equations. So we will substitute sine theta as 2 tan theta by 2 divided by 1 plus tan square theta by 2, which is 2x by 1 plus x square, assuming tan theta by 2 is x. Similarly, cos theta becomes 1 minus x square by 1 plus x square. Substituting for sine theta and cos theta in the equation above, we get this equation here. Now we'll just do the algebra, multiply by 1 plus x squared throughout and collect the terms to get this following quadratic equation in x. Recall that x is tan theta by 2. Just for simplicity and to convert it into the standard quadratic form, I will just redefine the constants. So I will say s is r minus q, t is 2p, and u equal to r plus q, so that I have the standard form of a quadratic equation sx squared plus 2tx plus u equal to 0. We know that the solution of this quadratic equation is x equals to minus t plus minus square root of t squared minus 4su by 2s. And recall that this x is tan theta over 2. And this is of the form numerator by denominator, y by x. So I will have two solutions to this problem, and the two solutions, theta 1 and theta 2, are 2 times a tan 2 minus t plus square root of t square minus 4su comma 2s, and the other one has the minus sign here. Now this is one method for solving the first problem. Let us look at another method for solving this first problem, which is also frequently used. Now what we will do is first, divide by square root of p square plus q square throughout. We obtain this line here. Now note that these two coefficients, if you square them and add them, they sum to 1. So I can say that sine beta equal to the first coefficient and cos beta is the second coefficient. It means that I'm assuming that beta is a tan 2 of p comma q or tan beta equals to p by q. Therefore, we have sine beta sine theta plus cos beta cos theta equals to the negative of the constant term, which we take to the right here. Now, this is cos of theta minus beta. So we have cos of theta minus beta equals to minus r by square root of p square plus q square, which gives us theta equal to beta plus minus cos inverse of minus r by square root of p square plus q square. And I will call this angle alpha. So I have theta equal to beta plus minus alpha, where alpha is cos inverse of the term here that I just mentioned. Note that I am doing plus minus here because cos of alpha and cos of minus alpha gives the same value. Let us look at the problem two now. We have two trigonometric equations in two variables, phi 1 and phi 2. The first equation is a cos phi 1 plus b cos phi 2 plus c 1 equal to 0. The second equation is a sine phi 1 plus b sine phi 2 plus c 2 equal to 0. a, b, c 1, and c 2 are constants. And as I just mentioned, phi 1 and phi 2 are the variables. So to solve the system of equations, what we will do is first try to eliminate one of the variables. So we want to eliminate phi 1. Therefore, we rewrite the system of equations. Just take p cos phi 2 plus c1 to the right hand side here and get the first equation. Similarly, take b sine phi 2 plus c2 to the right hand side here 
and you get the second equation. Now squaring and adding both sides, we get s square times cos square pi 1 plus sine square pi 1 and this is 1. Similarly, on the right hand side we get b square cos square pi 2 plus sine square pi 2 which is again 1 and then we get the other terms. So simplifying this equation gives us the equation here. Now note we have eliminated phi 1 and this is an equation in only a single variable phi 2. Also note that this equation is of the form of problem 1 that we have discussed before. We have some known constant p times sine phi 2 plus q times cos phi 2 plus r equals to 0. So this is what I have shown in this slide. Since the above equation is of this form p sine phi 2 plus q cos phi 2 plus r equal to 0, we can solve this by using any one of the two methods from problem 1. So in general, there are two solutions for phi 2. After solving for phi 2, how do we obtain phi 1? Recall that we had a cos phi 1 equals to minus b cos phi 2 minus c1 and a sine phi 1 equal to minus b sine phi 2 minus c2. So from here, we can easily see that we can do tan phi 1 equals to sine phi 1 by cos phi 1 equals to minus b sine phi 2 minus c2 by minus b cos phi 2 minus c1. So from here, we can get this solution using the a tan 2 function. Since there are two solutions for phi 2, there will be two solutions for phi 1. For each solution of phi 2, there will be a corresponding phi 1.